So now that our barcode view model is all set up, we're going to go over to our solution explorer once again, and we're going to click on our main window. And we'll come down to our XAML here at our barcode control. Now we're going to bind in to this view model. So we're going to call its value property and binding value and its symbology. And of course, bind it to our symbology property we just created. Now, since we're going to be generating barcodes into a Word document, we don't want our barcode view model to actually be the uh, data context of this entire window. So that's why if we back out here, we go over to our solution, we're going to now implement our main view model. Now to start implementing our main view model, we of course want it to inherit from our observable object going to create a public barcode view model that we've just created. We'll just call it barcode, call it get set. Ctor tab tab. We want to create a constructor here and just instantiate a new value for barcode view model. So that was easy enough. We'll go back over here to our solution and we'll open up our main window. And we're going to go back down here to our XAML. Now, as you see, we bind it to value and symbology, but since we scroll to the top here, we're going to have our main window be the data context. So we will uncomment this. We may actually have to go up here real quick and rebuild our solution. And once we're done, we should no longer have errors if that was your case as well. So we'll go back down here to our XAML, go to our barcode control. Now, since we're binding to the main view model, we want to add in barcode.value and barcode.symbology. And we'll see our designer right here updates to our default values that we gave it. Now, what's awesome is since this is an actual control, binding is gonna be really simple for updating our actual view of the barcode we're creating. So we see over here, we have a value text box. This, of course, is going to assign a value to our barcode control. So down here in our XAML, we're going to quickly find our value and we want to get the text box proper or the text box control. And we're going to bind it actually text binding and we're going to bind to the barcode dot value. We want a mode of two-way so if it gets affected in the view model it'll change here and if it changes here it will update the view model um, but if you remember by default WPF has a lost focus for updating the source trigger we want it to change as we change the value so we'll also access the update source trigger and do it on property changed now we see if we look up here at our designer, our text box should have our default value one, two, three, four, five, which is what we initially have. We'll back up here. Let's go up and debug real quick. So now that our application is running, we see here we have our text box with the initial value. We can change it to whatever we would like, such as one, two, three, four, seven, 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 eight, nine, six. And we see the control on its own is updating as we change the value, which is pretty good, I think, because now we don't have to invalidate the control every time we want to re-render it. Uh, the component takes care of all of this. But what we want to do moving forward is we want to export as image and export as PDF. So we're going to close this application and we're going to go down here to our XAML and we see we have our export as image and export as PDF. So what we're, what's going on guys, Tosker here, and in this video we are going to create a barcode generator and we will be using the Byte Scout SDK. Now this is a special video because one, it's my first review I'm doing on a product slash tutorial, and we are also going to have a little giveaway at the end which I will explain more later. Now of course we want to go over here to our button, let's go to our events. What's going on guys? Tosker here and in this video we are going to create a barcode generator and we will be using the Byte Scout SDK. Let's generate it here into our code behind. 
Now, these are both going to do the same thing, and we want to access some sort of dialog at, at the very least to save these images. So we're going to create, whoops, let's create a private void, and we'll call it save control. Uh, and we won't say image, we'll just call it save control. Uh, we're going to pass it a string called filter. So this is so we can filter out our dialog to only view certain files. We're going to create a save file dialog. Control period. We'll enter in our Win32 namespace. We'll call it save dial uh, save dialog, and we'll set it to a new dialog. We now want to call our save dialog, and we're going to give it a little filter that we're going to pass it in, like I mentioned. And easy enough, we're just simply going to show the dialog. Make sure it is true, meaning that it was clicked. We clicked OK. The user clicked OK. They didn't cancel or X out. And now we're going to do barcode. Whoops. What did I just do, guys? We don't have our barcode control. You know why? Because we need to back up here. And we need to go to our main window again. And we'll go down here to our XAML. Find our control. And we actually want to give this guy a little name here. So we'll just simply name him barcode control. So now we can go back to our code behind and here we can now access our control and we'll call the save image which is built into the control and we'll simply save it to whatever dial whatever we requested in the dialog. So now that all this is done we just simply have to call our little method here and we'll pass it a filter so for the image we'll just say png image will obviously filter for PNGs. Um, I actually copy, I'll copy and paste the string that I have here for the sake of time. You can pause the video and observe, but obviously the control now is going to accept PNG, TIFF images, JPEG. Uh, it could also do GIFs as well, but we'll keep it like this. We'll then go down to our PDF and we'll say save control and we'll say pdf whoops pdf star dot pdf and we'll pass it this filter so we can see we're not really messing up our code behind all we're simply doing is having a dialog control sending it a filter and then telling the control to save itself so it's the control is pretty much taking care of all of this we don't really need to be concerned with code behind beyond this point so now that we are going to go back to our main window and we're going to run our application real quick to test this out. All right, here's our application and we'll type in one, two, three, four, four, five, five. And we'll hit export as image. Go to our desktop here and I'll just say one, two, three, four, four, five, five. I believe that's what it was. We'll save it as a PNG, save it to the desktop, and then we'll also do our export PDF, one, two, three, four, four, five, five, and save that there as a PDF. We'll back up here, exit out of our application, go to my desktop here, and we'll see, as I drag them over, we now have created a barcode image as we see here and we'll open up our PDF and we also created the PDF.